Hello everyone, my name is Jabu Masondo, a tax partner at PwC in Johannesburg, the Sunning Hill office. Joining me today is my colleague from Zambia, Jyoti Mistri, in, the, in our Lusaka office. Today we're going to be talking about certain uh, aspects of doing business in Zambia. And we're specifically going to be talking about the tax implications for foreign investments. Okay, so Jyoti, we know that um, investing cross-border uh, comes with a lot of challenges uh, for investors because each country has its own unique problems. So in, in, in your views, in Zambia, what would you say are the top two or three things that foreign investors should be on the lookout for when they want to establish their businesses in Zambia? Thanks, Jago. You're absolutely right. Uh, there are a number of things that uh, foreign investors should really be looking out for and doing their homework before they uh, invest in, in Zambia. Um, the first thing is I should mention that we have a very effective uh, investment promotion agency called the Zambia Development Agency, um, and they, they promote a lot of investments in Zambia. Um, some of the, the, the things they offer are tax incentives. And a lot of investors come into the country, you know, having talked to the Zambia Development Agency Act, thinking they will be uh, entitled to the tax incentives. Now, the reality is there are some very specific rules around the tax incentives. And whilst you might be um, investing in, in a particular sector, for instance, the agricultural uh, sector is really promoted heavily, uh, there are other conditions, certain conditions you need to meet, um, and it has to be in a very specific manner and so on. So what we would suggest really to investors is really try and understand the detail. The devil is in the detail. If you don't understand what you're required to do to qualify for those incentives, you might sort of uh, make an application for the investment license, spend a lot of money and time only to find uh, after you've started your operations that you're actually not really uh, entitled to those investments uh, or the incentives, if you like. And particularly because um, the ZRA have their own, the Reve Zambia Revenue Authority have their own rules and regulations about tax incentives. So whilst the, the Zambia Development Agency might say, oh, you should qualify and you will qualify, you might be thrown out and kicked out by the Zambia Revenue Authority. So, so that's, uh, that's critical. Um, in terms of generally, uh, what I would say is investors really need to think about how they're going to structure their operations in Zambia. We often come, particularly, for instance, in the construction sector, mining sector, they've, got a, they've won a contract and, and they're really under pressure to get started off the ground. And they come in and they just start operating without really thinking about the structure that they're going to operate through or the medium that they're going to operate through. And you find that you know, they've, they've started, they, everything goes really well, they're really busy, they're earning revenues and so on. Two years down the line, the contract is almost finished and they need to repatriate their funds or they need to repatriate the profits and they need to dismantle their structures and you find, oops, they've got a lot of exit taxes, which they never thought about. Um, and a lot of other taxes even whilst the operation, uh, whilst the operating in, in Zambia. And if they had properly done their homework and thought through how to operate and what structures to set up. You know, you would find often we have seen, you know, a 50% uh, reduction in, in tax leakage. So, so that's another critical area. The third area I would say is immigration. Um, it is really important to understand that uh, the, the work permits and so on are not going to be granted immediately and there's a time process. Um, there are specific uh, conditions that, that uh, investors need to meet. And, and work permit applications take a long time. So if you've got a, if you've got a potential uh, uh, contract and, and the client, you know the client is going to want you, your, your staff on the ground pretty quickly, then please start working on it way before. Don't expect to be able to send the staff you know, within two days' notice or one day notice. Immigration takes you know, weeks. Sometimes it takes months. And there is a lot of documentation prepared preparation that needs to be done beforehand, make sure all the documentation is in order and, uh, and, and you meet the right conditions, otherwise you, you, you're going to face problems. Okay. So, so moving on, Jyoti, um, for, for those businesses that are already established, let's say you've, gone, you've done your homework and then you, you've passed through that stage and now you're established, what are the challenges that one should look out for once you're established in Zambia? 
Um, so one of the things that we have in Zambia is we don't have consolidated legislation. Okay? If you look at the Income Tax Act, um, the last consolidation was done in 1996. And since then, there's been a lot of amendment acts, a lot of statutory instruments, a lot of administrative rules. And if you really want to understand the legislation, you need to have all these things together. There is no real full consolidation of the legislation. So we're looking at so many years of legislation, which is all over the place. Um, and what you see on the website is just that last consolidation. So we see a lot of uh, investors coming in and they've downloaded this legislation from the website, not realizing that this is not up-to-date legislation and that there's a lot of subsidiary legislation. Um, in addition to that, um, the, 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 uh, the legislation is fairly generic. Okay, So we don't have uh, provisions for every single sort of uh, specific uh, type of transaction or industry and so on. And as a result, you have to use a lot of judgment. And if we have to, if we have to use uh, judgment, imagine what opportunity that gives to the Zambia Revenue Authority. They can use their discretion. And given this, there's a lot of uncertainty. Okay. Uh, and as a result of that, what we say to, to our clients and our investors is please always, if you're uncertain about the tax treatment of certain uh, transactions, please, please look at it beforehand, get guidance, um, because there's always not just one interpretation, two interpretations, there can be several interpretations. And you don't want to come unstuck at the, ninth, at, at the 11th hour, if you like. So, uh, yeah, I mean, paying attention to legislation is really critical. Also, um, you know, selection of, of the type of uh, advisor you, you, you take on board is really critical. And we're not just talking about tax advisors, we're also talking about legal advisors. You must make sure that the advisor you select has experience in that particular industry or in that particular field. Otherwise, you're going to come unstuck. Okay, thanks. So, so you, you talk about uh, uncertainties in, in, in the tax field. So from a tax policy and tax administration, is there anything in the horizon? Is the, is the government trying to bring some changes in that space? Okay. I would say that we have some challenges, particularly now. Um, as you know, over the last year, Zambia has faced um, some pretty difficult economic conditions uh, following the, the falling commodity prices and the falling copper prices. Um, Zambia is still very reliant on copper prices, so a lot of our revenues have gone. and. Uh, on top of that, we've borrowed a lot of money. We've had three uh, euro bond issues over the last uh, three to four years. And uh, given, given the, the, uh, the drop in the cropper prices and so on, and our forex uh, sort of uh, you know, being affected significantly, we've seen that our de uh, debt has, has actually um, almost trebled in value. So the government is short of money, and they have, uh, if you look at this year's budget, particularly which is read on Friday, um, the Revenue Authority is under significant pressure to increase collections um, from primarily from private sector um, in the form of corporate taxes, in the form of PAYE, and in the form of VAT. So what we are seeing is that uh, the Revenue Authorities are basically raising a lot of assessments, particularly areas like transfer pricing, VAT, and so on. And once they raise the assessment, the idea is pay now and then you know, discuss later on. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's interesting to talk about transfer pricing. So, I mean, there's been a lot of talk now, uh, currently, um, with the OECD and, and BEPS. Um, in Zambia, how are the taxpayers and the advisors uh, approaching these new developments? Um, very good question. You know, we've had in Zambia, we've had transfer pricing legislation since 1997. And we've had some draft practice notes from the revenue authorities. But until the last two years, we would say people have been, you know, fairly relaxed about transfer pricing because the legislation was introduced, the area didn't do much, uh, simply because it's a complex area, let's, let's be honest. And in Zambia, we don't have local benchmarking. But now with the pressure, and the, the, the pressure is coming not just externally with all the sort of um, um, hype around, uh, you know, tax evasion and, and, and all of that sort of thing and tax avoidance and the... And the and the aggressive tax planning, but also from local, uh, the, the local public, which are feeling that, that you know, a lot of their, particularly from the mining sector, the, the revenues that are earned from the mining sector not being equally distributed. Um, 
so there, there is pressure around that, and, and uh, as a result, you know, we've had, uh, in the mining, for instance, in the mining industry, uh, we've had about several tax regime changes over the last two or three years, uh, all aimed at trying to extract more um, taxes from the mining entities. So with OECD and so on, um, we've had the Revenue Authority, we've got a specialist division of the Revenue Authority that is specializing in transfer pricing and focusing on in, and certain industries. Uh, industries. Um, and with the BEPS project and so on, they're very keen and eager to take on some of the, the action plans on BEPS. Are, for instance, Action Plan 4, which talks about interest deductibility, management fee deductibility, and so on. And we've already seen some modifications into our legislation, even before, you know, proper implementation of, of BEPS uh, action plans, which is really going to restrict, for instance, interest deductions, which is going to really look at um, the amount of management fees very critically. We could even see a cap on management fees and so on. So, um, yes, this is, this is certainly an area of focus. Um, the, the government is expecting to raise a lot of revenues from this. And... Uh, and, and uh, it, it's, uh, there's going to be a lot of action around this, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jyoti. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today. I hope you found this very useful. Thank you. Thank you.